I love Teams. My entire business is designed around a Teams first approach to modern working because getting Teams right makes everything else easier or irrelevant. However, that does not mean there is no room for improvement. So here is my top five, either personally or that I get the most comments about on my YouTube channel, things I hate about Teams. I've got new videos on Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Teams coming out every Tuesday. So remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time a new video comes out. I'm Gavin Jones. I used to work for a Fortune 500 company and now help some of the biggest brands in food and drink save time for their employees and make their employees' lives easier. If you need help doing the same thing at an organizational level, I've got a few different ways I can help you out. Probably best that we jump on a call. Stick around to the end to find out details about how we could work together. If you're an individual that's not supported by your organization, I've just launched a pre-sale of our new courses designed and priced for individuals to help themselves out. Go and visit metime.inkific.com to find find out more about those and if you use the code social20 at checkout you'll get an additional 20% off any purchase that you want to make. So number one, wiki is not a wiki. Either rename it channel notes or make it into a proper wiki. So make it searchable, true co-authoring and version history like you do in any other office document. Or if it's not a priority for Microsoft to fix wiki or make it any better then at least stop adding it by default when you add a new channel. Number two, channel limits. Having a channel limit of 200 channels per team seems quite arbitrary. Although I'm sure there must be some sort of technical reason for it. If you're coming from Slack, Slack cannot have channel limits because the only thing in Slack is channels. You set up a complete Slack instance and you're not going to set up a new entity and have everyone log in with different passwords and things just to have a new channel. So you can't have channel limits in Slack. Teams then makes it a bit more complicated, a bit more cumbersome just because you're coping with different teams and different permissions and different SharePoint sites and then doesn't help itself by then having some arbitrary limit of 200 channels coupled with not having any good archiving ability without using a third party tool. Especially if you're a project based business and you need a channel for every single project, you're quickly going to run out of channels and then need to set up a whole new team and add everyone to it just because you can't add more than 200 channels, which seems silly because the amount of storage that a channel takes up is not that much. Either just make it as part of your licensed storage and if you run out of storage then fine delete some channels but just have 200 channels seems like it should not be there in 2022. Number three the notification default is custom. Why would any UI have the default set to custom because when you go into it you assume that you've done something wrong and you must have changed it by accident, then you can either have all, which you definitely don't want because you get pinged about every single thing that goes into a team's channel, or you set it to off where you get nothing and you definitely don't want that either because you're gonna miss loads of important things that people are using channel app mentions for to notify you and they rightly assume that you will get notified if they do a channel mention if you're supposed to be in that channel. So without great consistent training that you should use app mentions effectively then people will be turning things off, not realizing they've turned them off, things get missed and then people will just naturally revert back into email which is the one thing that we definitely want to avoid when we're trying to use a more modern way of working and get all of your internal communications done within Teams. So Microsoft not helping us out there with change management. Number four, feature parity in apps. So there are apps in Teams that are available as web apps, as desktop apps or mobile apps and they all have very subtle differences in functionality between them which can make you feel like you're going mad if you swore that you used to press this button and now it's not there or maybe once you open it in a desktop app next you've opened it in Teams and again you've opened it on mobile they're all slightly different. So for example lists in Teams is missing rules and automation that's in SharePoint when you look at a list in SharePoint or in the web app of lists. Tasks in Teams is missing the flagged emails from to do both the desktop app and the web app of to do have got flagged emails and that when you add it to the sidebar in Teams that isn't there and then the insights app in Teams is missing loads of core functionality at the time of recording than the insights add-in in Outlook. So that's just a few examples but obviously with Office on the web and desktop the amount of complexity is just multiplied by the amount of apps and the amount of places that you can go and see those apps. And last but definitely not least number five is channel meetings. So this is the most bizarre thing because it's never been fixed since 
Teams came out years and years ago. There's a massive benefit to keeping everything in context, everyone knowing where everything's going to be stored. And yet for channel meetings, meetings that are scheduled from a channel, it's still unclear what the behavior should be for invitees receiving a meeting invite. So depending on when the user was added to a team and when the team was set up, it can produce different behavior. Sometimes everyone in the team receives the invite, which you definitely don't want to happen because you've got the ability to add specific people to that meeting invite so just the fact that you schedule it in a channel does not mean that you automatically want everybody in the team invited to that meeting and if that was desired behavior then it should just show you that that is what's going to happen because there's no point adding individual people if then everybody gets the invite anyway and sometimes just the people you add into that channel meeting invite will receive the meeting invite which is how i think it should work and then sometimes individual people that have added to the meeting invite get that meeting invite in their outlook and their calendar but also all guest users that you've added into the team all of them get invited to that meeting which you definitely do not want to happen that should not be the desired behavior so i've seen all three of those different behaviors personally as i've used teams in my corporate job I've seen different behavior that I work with clients. And this is the number one thing that's really frustrating because you're not sure whether it's intended behavior that's changed with updates or just a bug. So what do you think? What's the most frustrating thing about Teams that you find? Let me know in the comments below. So thanks for watching so far. If you want to find out more about how I can help your organization work smarter and make your employees' lives easier, and probably best that we jump on a call. So again, visit metimeservices.com slash call and book a free strategy call where we can dive in and find out the next best step to move you forward towards a more modern way of working. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. It really helps support the channel and keep free content going out on YouTube. If you really like the video, consider buying me a beer using the link in the description below. So thanks for watching so far and we'll see you in the next video.